You're listening to Release Your Resistance with Bex Beltran. This is your Season 1 bonus episode. Welcome to Release Your Resistance. This is Bex. The only reason why any of us don't have what we want in life is because of our own resistance. Right now, I'm learning how to recognize and release my resistance, and this podcast tells you how you can release your resistance so that you can live the exact life that you want. Let's get started. Welcome to your between season bonus episode. If you've decided to keep a journal in 2021, or if you're just curious about why I love my journaling practice so much, then you will love today's episode. About six months ago, I did a Facebook Live video in my Facebook group where I took a trip down memory lane of all of my journals in recent years. And since we are between seasons right now, I thought that this would be a fun way to stay connected on this podcast until season two officially starts. So a few things to note about today's episode. Obviously, this was recorded as part of a Facebook Live video, so the sound is different. So my apologies if you don't like how it sounds. (laughs) And It is from a video. So during the video, I was showing things and pointing to things and flipping through pages. So just be aware that I'll be talking about things that you can't actually see, but I'm talking about them as if you could see them. And I did edit out most of my comments where I was replying to people who typed in messages during the Facebook Live, but I left in one that made sense along with what I was talking about. So If you're wondering who I'm talking to or who I'm answering, it was a comment. And you can watch the video if you're one of my favorites, meaning that you're on my email list. I sent you a link to this Facebook Live video in your email this week. And if you're not on my email list yet, but you really want to join because you want to watch the video instead of just listening to the audio, you can go to bexbead.org slash favorites. Give me your email address and I will send you the link to that folder so that you can watch this video plus all the other videos that I have sent out along with other podcast episodes. And during this episode, I make mention of the recent Friday episode all about journaling. So you can re-listen to that episode by going to bexby.org slash journal. And without any further explanation and disclaimer, here is my journaling journey. I wanted to share with you my journaling journey. That's if you know me, if you've listened to my podcast, if you've talked to me in person, if you've spent any time with me, you know that I stand by journaling. I think it's made such a huge difference in my life. My last uh, podcast episode on Friday was all about how you can start a journaling practice. And today I actually wanted to do a show and tell. I wanted to share my journals with you and maybe answer some questions. I wanted to show you my journals and show you my setup and show you everything that I do with my own journaling practice. So first thing is I currently, this is my journal, my today's journal actually, the one that I wrote in this morning. I love using a graph instead of a lined. I like graph and I like this brand of notebook. It's a composition notebook and it has a stiff cover. And I use this little bookmark. It's like a little magnetic bookmark. I use it so that I, when I sit down in the morning, I flip right to the page and I pick up where I left off yesterday. And I use these pens. They're Papermate Flare pens. This is a brand new package. I always have a package because I use them so frequently and I love giving them to people and I love recommending them and someone gave this one to me for my birthday. Thank you. So so this, this is the basics of my journaling practice. A composition notebook and my markers. And usually what I'll do is I'll like grab just three pens, like maybe these were the three that I grabbed this morning, um, because if I ask myself a question, I want to answer it in a different color, or if a pen runs out when I'm writing, I want to 
keep going without getting up. So I always have like three pens. I have my journal. I have my, my pens. And then I also use white out while I'm journaling. So this is the thing. I don't like scratch outs or like, you know, cross outs in my journal. So I white out and then those pens write over it very easily. Okay. So anyhow, my journal, what do I do with it? I, so yes, I write in different colors. Every day is a different color. And I like that because when I go back and reread, I like to know like the different increments, the different days. The other thing I do is I write in, I write in some prompts. You can see here, I write in prompts at the, at, uh, on the margins of each page and I do that in advance. I don't know if I have one coming up that I can show you. Yep, here's like a yellow one. So blank pages, when I first started this notebook, I went through and I sprinkled all my prompts in around so that when I arrive at the blank page, the prompt is waiting for me. And so like this morning's prompt was, What's my most recent moment of joy? And I wasn't expecting it. I, I didn't plan for that to be my prompt this morning, but it was perfect. It's always perfect. It's always the best prompt for that day because it gave me a chance to reflect on what I did this past weekend. And I wrote down like one, two, three, four moments of joy from the past weekend. And I, you know, described them and I, I wrote about them. And it was so wonderful. It was like a gratitude practice that just, and I know when I come back a year from now or six months from now and read today's entry, I'll be like, oh, I remember that. I remember that weekend. That was so joyful. Oh, yes. Maybe writing things in different colors help you remember things more easily. Yes, I agree. I've heard that too. And I think some people are organized and they like use different colors to mean different things. I am not that organized or that regimented. A different color doesn't mean a specific thing. I don't have specific colors for specific meanings, but I think some people do that and I think that's a great idea. Okay, what else do I want to show you about my journal? So that's our today. Oh, I want to go back in time. Blast from the past. So I haven't always been a daily journaler and I loved keeping a journal or a diary as a teenager, as a kid. You know, I was into it, but, and I, and I really valued keeping a journal throughout many different times of my life, but I went through a long period of not journaling at all. I actually stopped for a very specific purposeful reason, which if you want to hear that reason, you can listen to my podcast from Friday. And that's where I spill all the tea about why I stopped journaling for a while. And then someone gave me this beautiful book. It is like a Gustav Klimt painting. And um, I mean, look at <laughs> <laughs> what I did to it and this elastic band which I love it's like so loose it barely even like holds it together anymore so um but anyhow so someone gave me this beautiful book in 2010 maybe or I don't know when and it was so beautiful but I wasn't journaling I had no use for it but it was such a beautiful book and I wanted to use it and I liked the idea of it so I started journaling at that time in a very nonlinear way. And what I did specifically was I crossed a little line across all the bottom of each of the pages. And so I had this like little um, margin at the bottom of the pages. And what I used that little margin for was anytime I came across an expression or a quote or, you know, like a really nice intentional thought or something, I would like write it in the bottom margin there. And so then I could quickly flip through those pages and see all these really inspiring quotes or something. So that's one way I used this journal. And I used this journal for making lists of my brainstorms and doing like personal development exercises. Like I probably found this one in a book. It had like all these questions about goals or people or things. And so I like wrote out all the categories and then I answered all the categories. It was like a personal development exercise. Um, I used this for idea clouds, kind of like brainstorming. Like uh, I wrote a page, top of the page is called idea clouds. And every time I like had a new idea or was like thinking about something, I would just add it to the idea clouds page. And this journal, I just opened it up randomly and flipped around. I didn't keep it consecutively or chron chronologically. And this was the journal where I start, and you can see I have post-it notes all over the place. I would glue pages in if I had to take notes. You know, if I was like taking notes on a different scrap of paper, I would just like bring it to my journal and glue it in wherever it fit or with whatever it went with. So that's how this journal got super fat. I also 
found at a stationery store, I found these little pockets, which I never found again, but I loved gluing the little pocket into the front cover so I could like slip like cards or notes or something. And then I still put like sticky notes all over. So this was a journal I actually carried around in my purse with me. I didn't think of it as my journal because I just thought of it as like my notebook where I would like make notes and write down quotes and things. Like so many little notes. Like I would be like at my desk and I would like write myself a note and then I would stick it in my journal later. So I really, this was like my gateway back into writing a journal. And um, I still use it because I haven't used up all the pages and some of the activities that I did, I, I refer back to them or I'll look at the quote. So I still love this journal, but this isn't what I use daily and I don't carry it around with me anymore. After that one, I switched to this journal right here and I like the size, I love the colors. Um, and I, when I was pulling everything together today to do this, uh, I thought, oh, let me see what I wrote. And I wrote the most interesting thing. So this was April of 2014, the first page of the new journal I wrote. I haven't kept a journal in probably 10 years, but it's time to start. I met a beautiful open woman last week who gave me the quote, every day you should be reading a book and writing a book. And that was the quote that got me back into keeping a journal in the traditional sense, but not regularly, not yet. This was still sporadic and I still use this book for um, personal development exercises and for notes when I was getting coached by my coach. I would come to this notebook and write down all my coaching notes in here. And I used to do a lot of tarot readings on myself, so I would record all my own tarot readings in here. And um, I did use it as a journal too. I still was gluing pages in. If I kept something, if I wrote something down on a loose scrap of paper, I would just tape it or glue it in here. Here was an exercise I did from a book by Jenny Blake. She has a book called Pivot. And uh, so I did her pivot exercise and I recorded it all in here. I remember actually, I yep, see, she has, you do a mind map. I was, I actually had this one on a plane. I was flying home from a work conference and I remember going through her book and making all the notes in this journal. Um, yeah, that was kind of a fun exercise. Uh, anyhow, so yeah, this wasn't really a traditional journal the way that I keep it now. The thing that I really love about this journal is I went through this minimalist phase. I, th I think I'm still in it, but when I was listening to the minimalist podcast and I decided to do the minimalist game, which is a 30 day game of getting rid of everything in your home basically. And so instead of just doing the game, daily, I kept track of it in the back. Uh, and so I had everything I got rid of as I got rid of it, I kind of kept track of what I was getting rid of. And I didn't have a purpose for doing that at the time, except for I just like to make notes and make lists of things. But I am so glad that I did that. Because then I was able to reflect on all the stuff that I was getting rid of. And I saw some patterns and I noticed some things. And I was like, wow, I had so much stuff that I didn't even want or need or use. And by seeing it like spelled out, by seeing the volume of it, it like helped me not want to get back into that situation again. And I even wrote notes across the top about the category for that day. So like one of the notes I wrote because of what I had gotten rid of was, Today, I was thinking, if a company offers me promotional items, it's the same as offering me a piece of trash. <laughs> <laughs> like if they hand you like a keychain or like something, I was like thinking to myself because I had gotten rid of all these promotional items. Look at how many gifts with purchase, like cosmetic bags I ended up with because I ended up getting rid of them all. So that was, that's, this was a fun little trip down memory lane to look at that journal. Next up, let's see, what else do I want to share with you? Oh, so then from that journal, that was actually when I first got inspired to start keeping it daily. And I actually didn't even finish this book, uh, this journal, because I was inspired by Eileen Shu of Lavendaire, and I have a whole podcast episode about her. She was the one who totally made me step into my belief of the value of journaling daily, and I wanted what she had, and I was like, that's it, I'm going to journal daily. And so I decided, and I don't think I have the exact one, but I switched 
from this big journal to move to this style of journal. So these are composition notebooks like for school. And I had a big stack of them because I had bought them because they had really cute covers. I decided this was gonna be the perfect size for me to use. So then what I do or did was I would like put things in the front cover. Like I printed out my um, vision board and put it in the front cover. This was um, an envelope that a friend of mine had given me a card in. And it was just so cute how she spelled my name. So I put it in my front cover. And then the other thing, I used the grid that I guess is where you write your classes and stuff. I used it to write down all the things that I can do to get me into alignment. So I wrote down things um, things that make me feel great or things that get me into alignment. I wrote them all down so that if I ever needed like a quick reference, I could always switch to the front page. This was back in 2019. So what I also started doing because I started collecting, you know, so many of these notebooks, I started like labeling the front of them so I could easily find which time period this crosses. The reason why I do that is because I frequently want to go back and read specific dates. Like in fact, today, this morning, I haven't done it yet, but I was thinking I really wanna go back and read what I wrote around this time, the last week of July of 2019, because it was exactly around this time that I decided to start my podcast. And it was this time where I was starting to get all my brainstorms for the topics and, and what I wanted to do with it. And so I'm really curious if I can go back and find the exact day that I was like, hey, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna like make a list of topics. I'm gonna figure out how to organize it uh, because I remember when that happened and I wanna go and kind of reread that day and just kind of see what I was thinking, what I was feeling, uh, what was inspiring me at the time. So that's why I like to have the dates here so that it's really easy for me to go back and find an exact date. Then I switched, I ran out of this style and then I was in Office Max one day and I saw an assortment of these and I fell in love. They were like so cool, the right size and they had these really pretty pastel kind of like interesting like flippy covers or whatever and I bought like five of them. I was like so excited to use them. I couldn't wait for my current journal to be done so that I could switch over. And as soon as I started using them, I hated them. <laughs> I did not realize that the flippy cover, even though it's so pretty and I have multiple of these in like, like adjacent or similar colors, but they're very hard to write on. It was not a good writing experience at all. And then the tape isn't that great. They don't look that pretty. For some reason, I didn't put my label on here. I couldn't really use the front cover the way I had been using the front covers in other journals. So the rest of the journals that I bought in this batch, I ended up using them for other stuff. I think I only have like one or two of my actual journals in this style. And then finally, that's where, after that, that's when I landed back on my, my current favorite. And now here's an example. This is my manifesto that I wrote a manifesto for myself and I printed it off and I put it in the front cover of this. This was back in 2019. So if I ever wanted to read my manifesto, it was like super easy printed on the front page. Lately, what I've been doing in my journal, what I, I do write, I just like freeform write. I use my journal prompts, which I showed you. Oh, here's my other journal prompts. And if you are on my email list, this is what I sent you in last um, episode's email. So the other journal prompts that I have, I, I cut these little slips of paper. They each have something printed on them. And so every morning I grab out one of these and I open it and I read it and then I journal about it. It's either an intentional thought that I really wanna think, that's like a really good thought for me to think, or it is an intentional feeling that I really wanna feel. So if I pull out a feeling like delight, um, then I would journal like, how can I feel delighted today? What thoughts can I think that will delight me throughout the day today? And so, and I keep them in this little box. So I pull one out every morning, open it up, write about it, put it in a different box by my desk. And then once this box is empty, I refill it. So I'm constantly recycling those ideas. So that's another way that you, if you're like, what can I write about? I want to write, but I don't know what to write about. You can either plant prompts for yourself in the margin like I do, or you can have, and I do both, or you can have um, a little list 
I like the slips of intentional things that you want to journal about. And then just whatever comes up for you today, that day, that's what you use. The other thing that I've started this year in 2020 is every month, I print this out. This is an, a monthly interview that I do with myself. So every month, my phone tells me when I'm starting the phase of my cycle that is best for introspection. And so whenever I get that message from my phone, and it's like, oh, it's time to reflect, it's time to be introspective. That morning or the next morning, I'll print out or I have some of these already printed out this interview with myself and I'll fill out the interview because I think it's so interesting to look at the month as a whole, not just day to day. So the questions on my interview are, how's it going right now? What major thing happened in the last month? What do you think about those major things? Uh, what lessons have you learned? What have you been listening to lately? What song or other media is um, important lately? In what ways did you get closer to the life that you're creating for yourself? What's not getting you closer? And what are you looking forward to next month? And it is just so fun, first of all, to do this monthly interview with myself. And secondly, it is so interesting to go back and see what was I listening to? What was I looking forward to? Did it turn out the way that I thought it would? So I love this practice of having this monthly interview that I do kind of like the same time every month during the time that my brain and my body is best suited for introspection and reflection. So that's my monthly interview. And then the other new thing, the reason why I'm telling you all this is I want to show you how journaling can evolve, right? So my journaling practice late, you know, in the last 10 years started with this in a nonlinear format that I kept in my purse and I didn't write it daily. And it has gone through these different iterations and landed today on this, which I'm pretty regimented about and which I have a specific kind of way that I really like to do it for now, but it continues to evolve. So the other thing is I've noticed lately, I, I have what I call in the back pages, I have what I call a lab. And what I do with my lab is while I'm writing in the morning, it's my best time of my day. It's when I have a lot of inspiration and intuition and brainstorm and I get a lot of great ideas. So if I'm thinking of something, I'll flip back to the back pages and I'll start writing down my ideas or like what I want to create or what I want to do or an idea that I'm thinking about. I'm wondering how I could create it or do it and or topic ideas for the podcast. And I have them on the last couple of pages. And I like so basically, I'm doing the book, I'm burning the candle from both ends, I'm doing the book from the beginning all the way through that's my normal daily journaling, and then starting at the end and coming forward is my lab. It's where I keep my ideas and I write my my hypotheses and I, you know, make lists of what might be possible or what I might want to do. And that has been so helpful because when I'm kind of stuck on something or if I'm like, huh, I wonder like what have I been interested or thinking about lately? I don't have to go through like the daily pages. I just flip back and I see the lab at the end and uh, that that's been really good. And then the other thing is you you've seen that I put sticky notes and stuff. I just really want to give a shout out to these sticky notes. I've used them up. Uh, there used to be a yellow and now I've gone through all the yellows, but I really like these too while I'm journaling. If I think of like a to do or um, something that I need, like a physical or tactical thing that I need to do that's not really part of journaling, I'll write it down on the sticky note and then I'll make a list of like my to-dos or something and then I'll move them from my journal to my calendar. I have a couple of these sticky notes still that ended up in the lab instead. And then when I finish everything in my to-do list, what I've been doing lately with those sticky notes instead of throwing them away is I've been putting them in the journal, let me see if I can find an example. I've just been sticking them in. Um, and I just like that because I think in the future, I'll be really curious, like how was I spending my time? And I'll just wanna come back and see, oh, Monday, July 13th. Oh, okay, interesting uh, to-dos that I was kind of focusing on or working on them. I think that's gonna show me a lot of progress too. And what I thought was important or what I thought was a good use of my time. Did it turn out to be a good use of my time? So that's been something fun that I'm doing now for my future self. I hope you found this interesting. I'm gonna be very curious if you come up with any questions. I did write down a few questions. I think I've, oh, 
Um, I don't know if you've ever heard of bullet journaling. I have seen it. I think it's really artistic and beautiful and creative. It's not my style, but if any of this doesn't appeal to you, you might look into bullet journaling. They actually sell journals that instead of lines or boxes, they just have like dots and you can use those dots to draw pictures, make boxes, and people make the most beautiful bullet journals. So if that sounds like it might be interesting to you, you might want to check that out. The other question that I've heard is how do you find the time to journal? And my, I have two answers to that. And the first answer is don't make yourself find the time if you don't, if it's not valuable to you yet. Like you could start the same way that I did with this journal. I still, this was so valuable to me, even though I wasn't keeping a traditional journal. The fact that I had this as a collection of my thoughts and ideas and things that I liked and my brainstorms and my personal development exercises. This was so good. And this there, I had no expectation on myself that I would do this daily or for a certain amount of time. So that's one thing. If you're like, I want to journal, but I don't have the time or I don't think I would keep up the habit. Don't make yourself do that. Just have a book where you collect everything and put things in there and it can get super fat and stretch out the elastic. That's totally fine. You can do that, right? And then the second thing, the second advice that I have for you is make a plan to journal daily after you really have decided that it's going to be so valuable to you. That's what got me onto it daily was I saw how valuable it was for someone else and I wanted that value for myself and I believed it 100%. I was totally bought in. I was all in and I just decided to make it a priority in my life. And I really did make it a priority in my life. I like built everything else around it, my entire rest of my schedule around it so that this would never be interrupted. So that might not be an option for you today, but if you kind of think of that, like I want to make this a priority and then you find a time in your day where you know you can do it every day and just make it a priority and, and believe in it and tell yourself it's going to be so valuable for you. And, and then just start doing it and know that it'll be hard at first and know that you will feel awkward at first and don't make yourself do the same thing if you don't like it, if it doesn't work for you. Know that just like I showed you, mine have definitely evolved over the years, right? And it's been such a great practice. So that's what I wanted to share with you. Yeah, I loved sharing this with you. I love talking about journaling and I will see you later. Have a great week. Bye-bye. I hope you enjoyed hearing the audio of that Facebook Live video from last year. And if you now are curious to see what I was pointing to and talking about, make sure you are on my email list by going to bexby.org slash favorites. Send me your email address and I will send you the link to the video that you just heard. Otherwise, thank you so much for joining me in this special bonus episode of the Release Your Resistance podcast. I cannot wait for season two to start soon. Make sure you're on my email list so that you get notified when it starts. Otherwise, thank you so much for listening, and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye. This has been Release Your Resistance. Thank you for listening. If you like this podcast, make sure you're subscribed and leave a review on Apple Podcasts. Also, think about someone who you know who would love this episode and share it with them. There should be a share button on your app if you're listening to this on your phone. If you'd like to continue this conversation one-on-one -on -one or in real time, come visit me on my site at beckspeed.org to see how we can work together.